good morning to my children of class 8 and i'm happy to welcome you all in one more botany class and today's class will be the continuation of chapter 1 in the topic transpiration this is the last part of the lesson and in the next class you will have an online quiz so let's complete the remaining topic of chapter 1 that is transpiration what is transpiration you already know in my previous classes I have told you transpiration okay where it happens where transpiration happens in environment or in man or in plants where it happens transpiration happens only in plants okay so what is it how can you define that transpiration is the loss of water we'll uh, look into the exact definition transpiration is the loss of water in the form of water vapor from the aerial parts of a plant so transpiration is loss of water who is losing water the plant loses water in what form it loses in the form of water vapor see water as such will not ooze out of the plant right so it the plant is losing water but in the form of water vapor in the form of vapors which you cannot see however uh, some activities like when you cover the plant with a plastic paper when you tie a portion of the stem with a plastic paper you can observe droplets because the water vapor will convert into droplets okay so otherwise with your naked eye you cannot uh, observe or you cannot see this transpiration process because it is in the form of water vapor it is not it is not in the form of water okay from aerial parts of plant what is aerial aerial means the portion of the plants above the ground level okay you have soil no above that what all you have those are all called as aerial parts so there are three ways how it happens transpiration should happen through some part of the plant no so through which all parts of the plant can transpiration happens it can happen through three parts the first one is stomata the second one is cuticle and the third one is lenticels so what are the three parts of the plant through which transpiration or loss of water is happening either through stomata or through cuticle or through lenticels so i think the term uh, stomata is familiar to you right so what is tomato in the leaf you can see small small holes and these holes are called as stomata what is tomato the holes in the leaf the only opening um, in the plant is not the only opening in the leaf mainly the main opening why i call it as main opening because almost how many percentage 80 to 90 percentage of the uh, transpiration process is happening through this hole called as stomata so what is stomata stomata are holes in the leaves and also sometimes you can find in young stems actually young stem has the same property as that of leaf a young stem will mimic or act like a leaf okay so what are stomata stomata are tiny openings where is the where are the tiny openings so can you see these black shaded portion so these are the tiny openings of the stomata actually a stomata will appear like this there are two cells called as guard cells okay and this opening is the stomata okay so can you see many uh, openings like that this is the zoomed portion of the leaf what does it mean if a portion of a leaf is cut and if it is put under the microscope you can see the stomata okay so what else you need to learn i told you where are stomata present they are present either in leaves and young stem i told you actually only the epidermis that is the outermost layer of the leaves and the young stem will have this stomata what else okay where can you find highest in number where can you see highest in number especially in dicot leaves you can see on the under surface of dicot leaves you can see highest number of stomata next we learn about cuticle and lenticels what are cuticle 
before that how much percentage of transpiration occurs through cuticle in uh, stomata i told you almost 90 percentage of stomata uh, transpiration in plants is happening through stomata right how much percentage does it happen through cuticle what is cuticle first of all cuticle is the waxy layer or a waxy layer present on the surface of leaf or young uh, stem okay what is this waxy layer say in apple all you can see a waxy coating no that is man made i uh, mean like how shiny it would be right certain apples so similarly some leaves are also so shiny most of the leaves are shiny in nature because of this waxy layer called as cuticle okay so how much percentage of transpiration happen happens through cuticle only 5 to 10 percentage of transpiration happens through cuticle whereas in stomata 90 percentage transpiration happens okay so most of the water loss is through stomata but some like 10 percentage water loss is through the cuticle and what is cuticle cuticle is the waxy layer on the outermost layer you have some shiny uh, substance like wax it appears and that is called as cuticle so one more uh, pathway uh, or a way is there for transpiration to happen that is called as lenticels in um, stomata i told you they are pores or holes what is pore pore means hole okay stomata are pores or holes present on the leaves or young stem right whereas lenticels are pores which are found in the uh, older stem or in the bark of the tree even the bark of the tree have small small holes and through the holes also minimum uh, amount of transpiration happens how much amount only 0.1 percentage of transpiration happens through the lenticels okay so 0.1 to 1 percentage transpiration happens through lenticels what are lenticels lenticels are tiny pores which are found in the bark of the trees or in the all the stems so we have learned that transpiration happens through stomata or cuticle or lenticels that is water loss through plant is by these three ways okay so next we learn what is the importance of transpiration okay importance means what is the use of transpiration for who for you or me no how it is useful for the plant okay so there are four uh, uses i'll name them first then we we'll learn in detail about the four ascent of sap okay what is the first use ascent of sap what is sap actually when you uh, pluck a leaf and um, tear it some water like substance comes out right even when you break a, a green stem also you can see water or liquid like substance coming out what is that that is called as sap actually the water which is carried inside no which contains minerals also is slightly sticky in nature but actually it is main content is water only but when water is inside the plant you have to call it as sap you should not call it as water the name given to the water inside the plant one we pour water right we call we don't say that we pour sap do we tell like that no right so we pour water but once water is present inside the plant that water you have to name it as sap what is ascent ascent means something in the increasing order like maths all you learn ascending numbers right what is ascending number ascending number means like from uh, if I tell 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it is ascending numbers from low to high. So, what is ascent of sap? Ascent of sap means water uh, moving in the upward direction from lower region that is from the root till the where upper parts or aerial parts it moves from low to high. No, So, it is called ascent of sap that is the water. Okay, uh, For ascent of tra sap, transpiration is helpful because of transpiration ascent of sap is happening okay how we will see in the next slide so what is the second use i will just uh, name what are the use okay it is used in also in water cycle okay this also i will uh, explain through a picture in the uh, upcoming slides so for first use of transpiration is ascent of sap that is water can move from down to up then in water cycle also transpiration is helpful how i'll tell you then for distribution of minerals 
where it is distributed it is distributed minerals are distributed throughout the plant okay for that also transpiration is helpful i'll explain later and the last uh, importance or use of transpiration is cooling effect because of transpiration the plant itself becomes very cool okay we'll be learning in detail about the four uses in the upcoming slides so we'll start with ascent of sap so i already told you ascent of sap means the movement of water from the root portion of the plant to the other parts of the plant how with moves okay actually this movement of water no it is a continuous flow continuously the water from the root is flowing to the upper parts okay how this happens you need a force to suck the water up no that is called as transpiration pull transpiration pull is the force which can suck the water up how this force is created see actually water from the ground will enter into the root and it will pass through the xylem so what is happening water we you pour water here only right in the soil we pour then it enters into the root and it moves through the xylem where is the xylem why xylem is labeled here where all can you find xylem you can find xylem in all parts of the plant right you have studied in the structure of xylem that it is present in root stem and leaves only xylem transports water that is why xylem is labeled phloem transports food it does not transport water right so which one transports water xylem i have repeated many times right so xylem through the xylem in the stem the water moves and it reaches the leaves okay so here the structure of the leaf is shown magnified so which Which is the xylem in the structure of the leaf? Can you see this round circle, circular portion? So this is the xylem of the leaf. So from the root through the xylem of stem, it reaches the xylem of xylem of leaf. So this is portion of leaf that is only magnified or zoomed in and showed to you. Okay. So here after reaching the xylem, you have holes called as stomata. I told you now you have studied about stomata. These are guard cells, and this is the stomata. So through the empty space or the hole or the stomata, this water from the xylem is released out to the air or atmosphere or to the immediate environment. So what is happening? You pour water to the ground. then the plant takes in the water but again through the stomata or through the holes in the leaves or the young stem the water is out of the plants okay so some, when some water is lost there is a suction force created so what is loss of water we have studied loss of water is called transpiration so this water loss through the stomata is transpiration and when there is transpiration again a force a suction force is created which is called as transpiration pull so when there is transpiration there is pull or suction force of the remaining water in the soil and so the flow is continuous always the water flows continuously there is no gap so this is called as ascent of sap why we call ascent of sap because it is flowing in the upward direction you call it as ascent of sap so this is the first use what are the other uses we have studied that cooling effect and distribution of minerals are two more uses okay what is this cooling effect usually this cooling effect no we it is very much similar to sweating in human actually when uh, it is so hot human beings also sweat right when it is hot there is loss of water in human beings that that process is called as sweating right so when there is sweating your body cools it is a natural mechanism in your body that when you lose water out your body becomes cool you when the, when it is so hot you feel so hot but after sweating you will have some relief like or a cooling effect in your body so similarly here also once water is evaporated or see by transpiration the water comes out right so water vapor actually it is not water it is water vapor right so water vapor comes out and once water vapor is evaporated do you understand what i tell you 
so through the leaf there is transpiration so water goes out in the form of vapor right so in the form of vapor water goes out so once this vapor is evaporated it is not always sticking to the leaf right because of the temperature in the atmosphere or the environment it will become what it will happen it will be evaporated so after evaporation there will be cooling effect so always after evaporation there is cooling effect so you when human being sweat also you sweat and then you have water droplets still you feel a uh, hot but once that is evaporated you will have some cool effect in your body so same thing happens in plants also it escapes out by transpiration vapor comes out it the vapor is evaporated which will lead to cooling effect okay then the distribution of minerals see because of this continuous uh, transpiration pull no i told you by transpiration pull the distribution of minerals actually minerals are found in soil right so when you pour water that water will dissolve all the minerals right so these minerals has to be distributed evenly throughout the parts of the plant right so which one distributes them again in ascent of sap you have studied about transpiration pull no the same transpiration pull only distributes the minerals to all the parts of the plants okay so this is about distribution of minerals so because of transpiration there is transpiration pull and because of transpiration pull the minerals from the soil are taken up along with the water by the plant and distributed throughout the parts of the plant so this is about the cooling effect and distribution of minerals so next one more use we have not explained what is that water cycle right it is simple you must have studied in your lower grades like even in grade 3 or something you must have studied about water cycle so this picture must be so familiar to you right so what uh, usually you study you know you study like this i guess uh, from sea water is evaporated again it goes to cloud uh, and precipitation precipitation is nothing but rainfall no what is precipitation precipitation means rainfall precipitation is rainfall this is rain okay so here what is happening how it is related to transpiration process because our topic is transpiration right we have to discuss in terms of transpiration so from plants what plant does initially from the soil the plant takes in water right i can use red color i guess this is not visible to you so yeah this is good so the roots taken water initially and it supplies to the plant so it goes to all parts of the plant and what happens through the leaf there is transpiration no through air transpiration happens mainly through the leaves that through the stomata of the leaves transpiration happens so now water is present in the atmosphere no what happens this will this water transpiration will give water vapor no so water vapor is actually water so this will be converted into cloud so water droplets will form clouds and cloud will give precipitation which is nothing but what is precipitation it is rain so when there is rain again water comes back to the ground so this is a cycle because again the plant takes in it is lost by transpiration it forms water cloud rain again the plant takes so it is in the form of a cycle or a chain so that's why it is called as water cycle so only because of it's not only because of transpiration transpiration is also a reason for water cycle where else uh, water is reaching the atmosphere or how else it can form clouds also from sea water or other water sources in the land also these clouds are formed right so one reason for formation of cloud is by the water which is lost by transpiration so that's why transpiration is also involved in water cycle we can justify so these are all about the importance of transpiration and the last top, uh, topic what you have is 
factors affecting transpiration. There are four factors which will affect transpiration. What are factors? See if uh, the temp say for example if temperature increases transpiration also increases. So like that you have four or five factors. Let us see uh, what are they. Okay. So the first factor temperature I told you whenever there is high temperature this upward arrow mark means what is this upward arrow mark increases okay if I put downward arrow mark it means decreases or low okay. So when temperature increases transpiration also increases okay. So this is first factor the second factor when humidity increases transpiration decreases see it means whenever the atmosphere or the environment is very hot the plant will try to the root will try to take in water from the soil right because already the plant will be somewhat dry so it will try to manage the water loss by taking in more water so there will be more ascent of sap how much of water actually the concept is if you pour 100 um, ml of water 90 ml of water will be lost through the to back to the atmosphere okay so when there is high temperature the plant will take more water and lose more water so at high temperature there is more transpiration then when there is humidity what is humidity humidity means the water content in the atmosphere see if there is already water in the atmosphere the plant will take only less water and also transpiration will be less so when temperature is high the plant will take see how it is like this how much water it takes that much water it will lose okay so when there is high temperature plant will take more water and lose more water that is it will transpire more water when there is more humidity when the atmosphere has more water the plant will take less water so there is less transpiration then when there is when there is high wind okay when there is high wind there is more transpiration why see because if there is a plant and through the leaf if transpiration happens so through a leaf the there is a water loss okay if the vapor is in the surrounding environment if the vapor is here then uh, the next intake of water uptake of water no which the plant takes will also be less I mean if the leaf surface already has water vapor the plant will take less water but when there is high wind no the wind will drive away the uh, water or water vapor which is surrounding the leaf okay at that time the plant will take in more water through the root clear okay. so when there is high light there is uh, high transpiration why because whenever a plant senses that there is light it will open its tomato okay so when soil water is more when you pour more soil sorry when you pour more water to the soil the plant will take more water and also it will lose more water this is the fifth point okay so this is all about factors affecting transpiration then the homework i told you you will have an online quiz on 15 9 20 note down this date and start studying right from today because see only 10 pages have given pages 13 to 23 even if you read one page one day you can finish it very cool okay so this is not about memorizing see um, it is not about making you memorize two or three sentences okay so these days uh, especially in biology in your neat exams all know if you have plans to step into medical college understanding is more essential than memorizing or by hearting okay that's why this online quiz i could have given you two three question and answers and asked you to memorize and i can conduct test right why i opt this is to develop reading habits you need to read the book and understand so if you have doubts you can just check back the videos what uh, we have uploaded in our uh, uh, website i uh, if you are not sure about uh, your website, I can give you B Hillside 6 to 8 is your channel name for uh, grade 6 to 8. So, so B Hillside 6 to 8. So, 
uh, for homework you have a quiz no so i'm not giving uh, anything from your book and uh, these three have uh, done last week's uh, project uh, sugesh jebin and ask me john the potato experiment i have given no about osmosis see the results you can see water collected inside in all the three okay so good three of you so others also please uh, do your activities and also the homeworks regularly so that's all for today's class until i meet you in one more biology class you all take care and bye bye